Let's take a brief moment to talk about international trend watching. I already mentioned this briefly in the overview, and it's very, very important. You can find some great product ideas and great trends that you can cash in on in English-speaking markets before they hit English markets. So there's a gold mine in observing international trends. Again, once you've exhausted a lot of things in your business for your market, especially if it's your English-speaking markets that you normally target for your customers, and that's where your sales come from. But if you go to expand into other uh, countries, into other markets, or even if you don't, it's still important that you observe what's going on in other markets, especially like product trends and certain things that are going on. And you can oftentimes find really, really good uh, new trends to go after and profit from. So you can find hot new products that will sell well in English markets, but they start out in international markets first. Now, I've seen this so many times, primarily because I travel a lot. I travel all over the world. I've been to a lot of different countries. And uh, in fact, I've been to every continent at this time, but Antarctica. So I've been all over the world. And I can remember seeing products, just for example, sold on the street that were in other countries way before they were sold uh, in English-speaking markets. Um, for example, gosh, there's so many selfie sticks, for example, I saw those in Asia a couple of years before they were ever selling, uh, anywhere in the United States. Um, you may have seen, uh, street vendors selling these little magnetic balls where you throw one up in the air and you catch it and it makes like this kind of like spark reaction thing. I saw that in China 10 years before it was ever sold in the United States. Um, those little scooters that were popular for Christmas, many of those were built from a variation model that were selling in Asia long before it ever came to the United States and became a popular product. Uh, but anyways, there are tons and tons of examples of products that start out popular in other countries and then eventually make their way to the English markets. And typically, the companies that cash in on them first go after the market first, make most of the money. Um, I remember when the e-cigarettes started, and gosh, this must have been 2007, 8, somewhere around there, uh, maybe a little bit earlier. But the kind of vaporized um, little cigarette pens, the e-cigarette pens, uh, they were big in Asia. Uh, and then they came, uh, or at least certain types of them I saw, they came eventually to, in, for this example, the United States. And there was a couple companies that jumped on that kind of trend to sell to the United States. And they made millions of dollars by being one of the first players to do it. They simply imported them from the manufacturer that was making them in Asia and sold them in the United States long before the United States market had really seen that product. But yet tons of people had bought it, uh, for example, in Asia and in other countries. So you can find new products if you just keep an eye on these other international markets. And sometimes, you know, it may not be relevant for your business, but sometimes they might be. Uh, and so you can add that product line to your to your business, whatever that may be. I'm giving you some kind of ob obscure examples. Uh, you know, some of them are street products. Some of them are, you know, uh, different m medical types of products. But uh, it just depends on your business. Now, you might find a great opportunity in another country um, and then you can clone and build a brand or site with an English version. So it's the opposite of what I mentioned about if you take your existing business and you clone it and create a supplemental website and product and brand in a different language, uh, you can find an opportunity in a different language, but then create another brand site uh, in an English version for yourself. So it's kind of the reverse of that. And of course, always remember that people in all countries have problems that need solutions. That's what we're pretty much selling as business owners. We're typically selling a solution to some sort of problem. And in every country, um, if you break down the core needs of human beings, let's say, let's take housing. If you take housing, for example, most people in most countries uh, have the need, let's say, to decorate their home in some way but also to buy and or sell or rent homes in some way. So the real estate market is like in every different country. Um, so there, there are just lots of different similar needs across different countries uh, where people spend their money. And so that's why 
similar products will just sell to those people with, with some slight variations. So it's, it's fascinating to keep an eye on different markets for different product trends and different service trends. And again, if you can be one of those people that gets out ahead of the trends uh, f- to bring it to English markets or your own country before, um, before other people get a hold of it, you can usually make a lot of money quickly uh, before the you know such a product idea or trend gets saturated. So again, I don't advocate that everybody's always looking to sell the trendy products because typically for long-term business, which is what I teach people to build, you're not going to be selling trendy products. However, it's it's kind of an asterisk there because sometimes you can find trending products related to your existing market could be something new for the health market, some new supplement or herb that's been discovered or, or something else. Uh, and so you can just kind of add it into your existing business and certainly uh, just make more money that way. So it's not necessarily about building a new business around some new trend or new hot product. A lot of times if you can supplement your existing business and you have built-in distribution with a list, with traffic, with a customer base, it's just an easy way to generate more revenue quickly. So Keep an eye out for, for trends and, and what other countries are selling uh, that are outside of the primary English-speaking markets, which most people online are, are competing for the traffic uh, for those markets.